new document. Um, and I'm going to set up my new document. I want this to be 8.5 by 11. I want my orientation to be portrait, 300 resolution. I'm working in RGB, and I want a transparent background. And this is a little delayed. Okay, so over here, you can take a look at what I have um, saved on my desktop. Let me just show that real So if you can see here, I have different folders saved from the shows that I watch. Um, so this is my mood folder. I kind of pulled those images from Pinterest and the internet. Um, I have a folder with leather, black and minimal. So I saw a lot of all black outfits, feminine and graphic. So some graphics and then um, some really graphic color combinations, um, monochromatic neutrals. And then I saw a lot of waist accentuating. So I actually saw a lot of full skirts um, that were either with crop tops that showed the waist or they were belted. So I think waist accentuating um, is a shape. It creates an hourglass shape. So I think that that's a shape that's trending. Um, and then we talk, if you guys took fashion fundamentals already, you talk about erogenous zones um, that are trending. So I think that the stomach, the waistline, and I asked this question the other day in class, I don't remember what they said. Those are all parts of the body that are trending to be exposed, okay? Um, so what I wanna do first is start working on my mood board. I don't have that many images for my mood board. Um, but I'm gonna open this up. So right now I have a zebra and then I have an older lady in here. So in, I'm trying to think, two of the six shows that I've watched right now, I actually saw that there was a trend to have elderly models. And I was like, oh, maybe my customer will be a little bit more uh, advanced. And so I think I'm gonna put this lady on. She's from the documentary Advanced Style. If you took the style class with me, um, that was one that I suggested that you watch. And I'm gonna actually go in and let's do a file place. And she's gonna go on my mood board. Remember when you're searching for these images, make sure you find images that are large. <coughs> So that they don't pixelate or distort when you bring them in. So I'm gonna actually, this is in transform mode, so just resize her because I already know she's kind of big. And I'm gonna hit enter. I do want to get rid of this white background. And I just want to check over here. My image is not locked, so I'm good. Um, so to do that, I'm going to go in and either use the marquee tool to get rid of that little white frame, or I could use the magic wand here. Let's see if I use the magic wand. I need to be on my blade. Um, it looks like it's making a good selection here, so I'm going to just go ahead and delete. I cannot delete, so I need to go rasterize. So I'm going to go to layer, rasterize, smart objects. Okay, so now I can edit. Okay, 
Okay, so I'm going to delete that and hit Control Z to deselect. And if I want to go in and resize, I can hit Control T or go to Edit, Transform. And I'm going to resize her just a tiny bit without distorting her. Okay? So make sure you're resizing proportionately. Hit enter. Um, the biggest advice that I can give for these move board pages is to make sure that you use less is always more. So nice, clean images that get right to the point instead of a bunch of collagey, small, distorted images. Okay. Um, because then your message kind of gets lost with how much information you're putting on the page. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and place my zebra image. The reason why I do, I am doing the zebra image, um, I think I'm going to choose this one. Let's see. I'll probably end up redoing it. Is I saw a lot of black and whites, a lot of neutrals, um, and I really like the black and white pairing. It's pretty much what I wear every day. So I think I'm going to include that since it's trending right now. I'm going to include that in my trend. Now, here's my issue. I got two figures or two images. And are they, so I've resized them so they're about the same width. But I want to make sure they're covering the same area on the page. So I'm going to actually take my marquee tool and I'm going to set up a ruler. So I'm going to hit control R and I'm going to set up a guideline here and I can go on with my rectangular marquee and I'm going to just slice the bottom of the zebra off. Sorry, but I'm on the wrong way. Uh, let's go in and rasterize this image. So, rasterize my object, and I can delete that. Hit Control D, and I got a little bit left here, so let's do that again. I didn't select. Okay. Hit Control D. So right now I'm going to go with these images. I may actually, because I found a lot of leather, go in here and find something else with leather to put on my move board. Um, I'm just keeping it simple for right now. So the next thing I want to do is actually put some swatches on my move board. So I'm going to line up a space to put my swatches in. I just want to set up some guidelines so I have a consistent border here around my page. Remember when you're laying out things, you never want to put images too close to the edge of the page. Okay? Especially when you go to print, they will cut off. If anything, you want to have a heavier border at the bottom of your page um, than at the top. Okay. Um, I'm also going to put a guideline here in between these two images. Okay, and next thing I'm going to do is go in and choose a shape. Okay, so make sure, so you have access to all the tools. Right now, you should be working in the, if you go to workspace, in the graphic and web, it will give you different tools um, if you're in photography or then in paint. Because painting, you'll get a whole library of brushes over here. Um, so make sure you can toggle between these, but right now we're going to work in graphic and web. Okay. Um, so I'm going to go in to my shapes tool. You can see now that the shapes tool has popped up. It wasn't there before. And I'm going to choose the ellipse because I want my circles for my Pantone swatches. I'm going to go in, hold down the shift key, drag, and make my circle. 
and I want to make it fit. Hit the select the move key, move tool, and let's make it just a tiny bit smaller. I'm going to go to edit, transform. So there's my first swatch. So it's the wrong color. Um, so what I'm going to do is go in and choose my foreground color. I can do it here, or I can do it here on the layer, and double click on the color picker. And I actually want to eye drop from my picture, and just know that there are multiple blacks here. So I'm going to pull it from a. If I go in and eye drop, that looks like a charcoal gray. This is a really dark black. This is probably a version of gray up here. So I want to make sure I'm getting colors that are actually in. I actually like that gray. So I'm going to click OK. Now, I want the same exact shape to be duplicated for all of my swatches. And I think I'm going to go ahead and put maybe six swatches. So I'm going to make sure I'm on my ellipse layer. And I'm going to go to Layer, New. And I can do shape layer via copy. Okay, and another one has popped up. If I click on the move tool, I can just slide it to the side, and there's my new one. Okay, and Photoshop will help me to line it up. I can do that again. New layer, shape layer via copy. Copy. And I get two more. Now, even if you haven't decided what your color story is going to be, what your trends are, you can work on a page layout with me so that then you can just go back in and swap these colors or whatever you need to do. Um, I'm actually going to go in and so now these are spaced too close, apart, too close together, but I'm going to try to fit these a little bit closer so that they'll all fit on the page. I can also, with the move tool, use the arrows um, if I want to just do smaller movements. pretty good to me. Okay, so now what I want to do is first ellipse is the color that I chose. So I'm going to go in and double click on the color picker for the second one. I can go in and I do want this red because it showed up in my color story. I like that color. So I'm going to click on that. Um, when you guys go into the color picker, um, remember that I showed you you could save your swatches, so I'm going to click Add to Swatches, and let's name this um, okay. And let's go back and name the charcoal gray. And this is just very basic layout. Okay? Um, and then you can go back and change some things. Right now, we're just focused on information. Uh, let's go to this one and see if I can get the white that's in here. Hold on. 
And then there was a tan color um, that I saw. How many um, do you are About six. Five to six, yeah. You don't have to overdo it. I just want you to look at a layout, and I've, I've put up some example boards in there. Choose what works for you, because everybody has their own aesthetic, and the aesthetic should be in line with your whole lookbook. So mine will probably be very basic and plain and just not too fancy, but I do want you to also look at different layouts, like graphic layouts, so you can decide what you want to put on your page that can be consistent. And we'll talk about that a little bit more next class. Um, last one I want this tan color that I did see pop up um, in a lot of the shows Okay, so now I actually want to go in and find my pants on both. So for this one here, um, if you go to color library, this will pull up my Pantone code. I'm not going to do this for each one. So I can go in and write this down. I'm going to just take a quick picture so then I can type it. And I really only need the code. If you want to name your colors, you can. Um, so I'm going to the text tool. And my text is huge up here. And remember, I did post a color chart, Pantone color chart for you. And I want to go in and choose a font that, again, goes along with my aesthetic. As I roll over the font, you can see that they're changing. So I find one that looks, I want sort of like a clean, maybe modern looking font that works for me. There's my 
Phantom Code. Um, there's not a lot of information on here. I do think that I would probably, once I find the another picture, put it probably if it was a landscape picture, put it here and move my swatches down a little bit on the page. Um, I can also do things like add borders, put lines in here um, to add some graphics or shapes. There's nothing in here I think I want to use. So I probably actually maybe use the line tool or the shapes tool to maybe create. I could go in here with the rectangle tool and if I want to add a little visual interest, put a rectangle in the back to border my page. And it's in the front of everything. It's my top layer. So I'm going to just click on my layer order and move it under everything else. So it already looks completely different. Um, let me get rid of the guides. There are the guides. So actually, um, I would just move these images down. It's not that bad. So let's click on my rectangle, use the move tool. I just think it's too close to the top of the page. And again, I'm going to make my rectangle just a little bit smaller, so I'm going to go to transform. to the top of the page. So then I'm going to hit enter to confirm that. And then I'm going to select these two image layers together by holding down the shift key, use the move tool, and just slide these down. Very simple move board. Um, because my text was black, it's lost now. Maybe the light gray might look better. There we go. Very simple, clean move board. Um, one of my trends with graphics on my page is clearly graphic. The strong graphics, not a lot of images. And when you see the things that I pulled from the fashion shows, the move board images will make a little bit more sense. Okay, so. So you have to pick one color and do a shape for this watch. Um, so Xavier, I'm not sure if you heard somebody in the class ask the question about how many colors for your color story. You don't, I'd like for you to have one color per swatch for your color story, but you should be choosing five to six colors that you see trending for your color story page. Um, So when I make my swatch, which could, which could be any shape in here, um, and you can choose from the custom shape tool and it could be anything, I'd like for you to have one color per swatch, but you do know how to use color replacement tool. You can make anything your color actually. I could have 
six of this zebra up here, all in different colors, and those could be my color swatches. Um, you can also go in here and paint it too. So you could paint over something. Um, there's a lot of different options. I just want to show you the most basic of what I'm asking for. Um, I realize nobody wants to be basic, but this, you know, I just want it to be very straightforward and then you take it and run with it. Okay, so here's my move board image. Uh, right now I'm going to leave it as it is. So everything on this border is going to be white because that's transparent and I'll end up printing on white paper. Did you have a Or uh -huh. To look at something? Okay, give me one second. Okay, any other questions before I leave the mood board page? Are you getting the color names from Pantone? So the color names I came up with, but the codes I am getting from Pantone, um, I'm not actually following the chart. You can name them whatever you want, but I want the codes to be correct. So if you actually had to go look them up, it's the correct code. Um, with you asking that question, I just want to make sure when you go in here to find, um, it's a good idea to write down the Adobe code. So if for some reason you want to use this color in Illustrator, you have it, or you can just type it in and the color picker will find that color. Um, if you forgot to save it to your swatches, because you can see when I clicked on the bricks, I got like 20 different versions of paint. Okay, so you want to make sure it's the same color and it's consistent throughout. But when you go to color libraries, make sure you're choosing the solid coded. Sometimes the Pantone code that it chooses will not look like the exact same color in the color picker. Okay, and that's because you have a range of colors here in the Pantone, especially the metallic. They never come up like if I were to. Um, <clears throat> have like some kind of foil or something up here and I eye drop it, it will come up probably as like a gray pesto. Um, but make sure for right now you're just using the solid coated um, to choose your Pantone code. And if you get something really crazy and you're not sure about it, just take a screenshot of it and send it to me um, and we can go from there or a little video and I can tell you how to handle it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and save this file. Um, just remember, you want to save a working file so I can go back in here and edit and I see all my layers. So that's going to be saved as a PSG. So I'm going to file save as. And I'm going to save to the computer. Um, as my project to move for. Well, it's moving forward. <clears throat> I'm saving this as a Photoshop document. And I'm going to save it to the desktop so I can easily pull it up. Okay, if I know I'm not going to make any changes and this is going to be what I put in my PowerPoint, I'm going to do File. <coughs> and I'm exporting. And I'm going to save for Legacy. Make sure I have a GIF here. And I'm going to save. Okay, and then for my print file, if this was finished, I do File, Save As. I'm going to save this also to my computer. And I'm going to save my PDF. And that's what I will go and print for my hard copy portfolio later for professional seminars. Okay. Good. I always want to keep a PSD image so I can go back in here if I need to take something off, if I need to rework it. You have that working file that you can edit. You cannot do that with a PDF. Okay. All right. So let's close this one. And I'm going to start working on the comparison page. One of the questions that I got through email about this project um, was about the comparing fashion shows. And I'm going to say it again, you guys are not watching fashion shows. You need to know who the new designers are. You need to be thinking fashion forward, not what's available right now. What is the next thing 
that influencers will be wearing, um, will be presenting to you, uh, what's going to be on the runway in six months to a year from now. It's your job as a fashion professional to relay back to me what the what the future of fashion is right now. But I just want your perspective on it, okay? But you need to find that information from the runway, from, um, I'm very old school, so I don't like to really reference the influencers, but they are being given stuff sometimes before it's even on the runway. Um, and I know it's easier to access what they're wearing on Instagram and on social media um, but it, you just kind of have to be careful who you're looking at and what they have access to, or like if they have an agenda, because that might not actually um, be right in line with what's going on in fashion. So I'm going to just pull up <coughs> some of the images. I'm going to do a new document. And this is going to be, I guess, for my leather trend. And I found a lot of different ways that leather was being used. So I'm going to just place these images. and pull these from, let me see if I can say. Because these are now leveling. Let's figure it out. Open it, let's go to the shop. No. Okay, so I'm actually glad this happened because now I can show you how to take a screenshot in here. So if you're on a Mac, you would be using the grab tool. If you're on a PC, you can use what's called the scissor tool. So let's say you visit a website and you want an image from that website and it has flash. So the images keep moving. Um, what you can do is go ahead and and snip it and do a screen capture. Oh, I don't want that one. Hold on. Why is it coming up as an ad? Oh, here we go. So I'm going to do a new, let's pin it, okay, so I'm going to do a new snip because these, when I drag them from Vogue, became links, so they won't upload into Photoshop, so I'm going to do a new and I can go in and select my area, or you can do a snip of a whole screen or a whole window. Actually, I just want the leather, so let's just snip this. Okay, and I'm going to go in and save it. And my pictures and red. Okay, so then I can come in and do a file place. Pictures of the red leather. There we go. Okay, so this is going to be my leather page. And I think I hear somebody talking.
Okay, so Aquarius put up another question. Are you getting the color names from Pantone? I think I answered that one. So color names are made up. Color numbers are Pantone codes. Yes, that I just showed how to look up. Also, the images for the lookbook doesn't have to be photos we have taken. So let me clarify the images for the lookbook, editorial portion of the lookbook are your original photos that you're taking for your photo shoot. So that's your cover photo and you should have an editorial section where you are reinterpreting the trends that you have found on the runway. These trend pages, which are what I'm doing right now. So mood board, my trend page on leather, my trend page on all black garments, my trend page on monochromatic neutrals and waist accentuating. That is the research to back up what's going to be in my editorial from my photo shoot. So right now I'm just working on trend pages because I have not taken any photos. So I hope I'm answering your question correctly. Your research pages do not have to have and should not have your photo shoot images. They should be what you're pulling from the runway to tell me that this is trending, this is fashion forward. But your editorial section for your photo shoot does need to be your images. So the editorial is a completely different thing. It is included in this project. So if you go back and read the project, the editorial is at least five books that you have put together based on this research information that you're compiling for. So you are reinterpreting what you've seen on the website, on websites and runway to tell me this is the future of fashion and I need your spin on it with a photo shoot. So you're styling these looks based on what you can find. I've also had students ask me, well, I can't find these things. Sometimes you have to go back. So we know fashion repeats itself. So sometimes you have to go back. A good place to start is Goodwill. Um, try to, when you're looking at the runway, try to think about what you can borrow, what you have that's already in line with what is being seen on the runway. We've seen a lot of metallics. Um, I've, I have a bunch of metallic stuff. So I know that that's a trend that I could probably pull off in a photo shoot. So you may have to edit yourself down while you're making this trend list as to what can I really pull off, okay? Did I answer your question, Aquarius? And Xavier, the editorial is part of this project, but that's the second part. So I want the research pages first, so then you can successfully execute your photo shoot because you have some background information. Okay. Thank you for asking that question because I'm pretty sure somebody else had that question. Okay, good. And I hope that you guys are excited about this. Yes. I'm just getting eyes in here in the room. Okay. All right. Okay, so here's my leather. I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller. Uh-oh. Yeah, I'm just starting here. And I wanna get rid of maybe all of this white around her. So I'm using the magic wand and I probably have to rasterize them. I'm going to click OK for the layer, rasterize. I think I'm going to do this one page um, just to show you how to lay out like a comparison and then we'll stop here for the day. There's only so much you can do until you actually go into research. So I'm going to select. Um, anything that needs to be cut out to inside her arm, I'm going to hit backspace and delete, hit control D. I can go in with my eraser and get rid of the lady that I cut off in it. Okay, it's a nice clean cutout. I'm going to go in and zoom in and make sure I didn't cut anything I wasn't supposed to. That looks good. 
There's a little bit of a shadow down here that I can kind of blend in, but I can worry about that later. Um, right now, I just want to get my figures on the page. Okay, so that's this one. I'm going to go in and... And we also need five trim pages plus the blue floor. Yes. In total, we need five editorial looks for the photo shoot. Yes. I would like for you to give me, I love, love, love images. And if you're going to do the work to go do a photo shoot, um, give me and use as many images from your photo shoot as you can in this lookbook without it being redundant. Um, so give me different views. Um, Choose a really strong photo for your cover. Um, again, I want to remind you, if you're using a photographer, make sure that they are used to shooting fashion. So some people just disregard the clothes and they're worried about the overall picture. So you want detailed shots of garment details, construction if that's important. Let's say something is stitched with neon thread we need to be able to see a close-up on that. An accessory, texture of fabric, things like that. So you, as the person who is directing, creative director for this project, you need to make sure that all these things are captured so you can include that in your project. Okay. okay so I'm going to save this one. So let's bring in, I think I'm just going to do two images. I have a bunch of leather images, but because they're linked, I'm going to just do a couple. So this is basically just to show you, again, how to cut out things. Um, so I'm going to place her, go in and make sure she's rasterized. If I can edit. And this one may not be as easy. It's kind of easy when they're on the solid color background to use magic wand and get rid of the background. So let's see what happens. So it's selecting part of her leather vest. So, um, and thinking about like things trending and what you can find, I literally have a skirt just like this. So this is something that I probably could pull off. And this vest is kind of basic. This is something I could even make really quickly because it just has side and shoulder seams and I could put snaps in the zipper on. So be resourceful, that's part of this project too. Um, so I can adjust my tolerance here. And then try to magic wand again. Let's see if that works. That's better. And I'm going to pull down shift, click there to cut out and here. And get rid of the background. And now I have Control D to deselect. Go to my eraser tool. Get a slightly bigger brush. Uh oh. I went crazy. <coughs> and I hit Control D to go back a step. <coughs> This like changing the weather is not my body is not like I'm, I had to break out a sweater yesterday. So I could have gone in with a marquee tool and kind of erased this too.
And I just want to show you some options. Usually when people are doing the trim pages, it can either get cluttered with information or look a little messy. Or people just don't know. Sometimes the scariest thing is a blank page just kind of sitting at you and you know you have to include information. So this light is cut off. And I personally don't like when people look like they're floating in space. Somebody said, seriously, I went from boiling hot to freezing cold. Yeah, and I have sinus and allergy stuff, so you guys, I'm not sick, but like my throat is on fire. But it'll be fine. I got coffee. <laughs> um, I don't like that she's floating, and you can also see that they are on two different proportions. So I can easily do that because we know how to resize, but I'm going to move her so that she doesn't look like her legs are cut off. And I'm going to probably place her somewhere at the bottom of the page. Okay. Again, I want to be mindful about keeping a border around my page, but I purposely want her legs to kind of cut off at the bottom. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to hit um, or go to transform. And let's make her just a little bit smaller. So it will give the appearance. Of her being about the same proportion as the other lady. I think this is pretty good because I want to fill my page and she might actually be a little too small. Of it. Okay, so I'm going to hit enter. To <laughs> pre transform. So edit, pre transform, and that way you can do anything because. If you do free transform, like I can rotate her, I can do a little bit of anything. You can move her, yeah. With the other one, you have to kind of choose which transformation you want. <laughs> okay. So then with the red leather lady, I want her bigger and probably in the background because all my other images are dark. Distorted. Or if I wanted to cut her off, I probably could. And I can see here when I move her that there's some of her image that's not cut off that I need to clean up. She probably would look better here, or I can flip her. So I can actually do, let's hit enter. Let's do edit, transform, and let's flip her vertical. Wait, flip her horizontal. There we go. So I like her better facing this way because it kind of frames the page. And let's get rid of this. So red leather lady needs to come down. This lady. I want to look at where um, my eyes are directing the page. So right now, based on her strong shoulder and her shoulder front, like my focal point of my page is here. So this is probably where I'll put text. Um, I have a couple more images to put in here, but I would probably put my little blurb about this trend here. Um, I'm not a fan of like vertical type and things like that, but just know that you have options for directional type in here. So I'd probably do my leather. And I'm going to just change the 
I don't like the, I'm going to show you different ways to do things and just remind you your options. So I don't like the color because I don't feel like this is strong enough for the word leather. Um, so I'm going to double click on my text layer and do color overlay. And I'm going to click on the color picker. That's a darker red than we have before. But I'm going to click on the red. I kind of like that. Um, and then I want to go in here and I can go in here and I actually want to put a little blurb in here about what I've seen. So this is optional because you're going to have a separate forecast statement where you talk about all the trends. Um, I can say um, leather is um, being used for spring. Clearly not a finished trend page, but I'm, I have a few more images I'll put in here. This image is kind of bothering me because I see a little bit too much of her skin. So if I find something better, I'd probably swap it out um, for that image. But I want to compile all my image images. So my strong images for this trend are on this page to really push the point. Okay. Um, I could even talk about like the proportion. So right now I'm looking and there's a play on proportion here with like shorter outerwear, longer skirt, or like hard with feminine, um, and the same thing here. Okay. Um, when thinking about layout, especially with collaging, I just want to remind you that you have the um, opacity. So sometimes when you are, let's say I wanted to overlay these, like have maybe her in the back. And I can put a couple images here that still show enough to, to push my point. I can go in and adjust her opacity here. Not too much, but enough so that she doesn't stand out so much. And the same thing with her, just to help me to blend these kind of mix match images on the page. So they don't stand out so much because the red is standing out way more than this one. 
Okay, so any questions on what I've shown so far or any more questions on the project? This is also great to use when you cut out something because you have those really hard edges. And we talked before about blurring around the edges, but sometimes it can get a little too blurry when you look at it up close. Um, so a good way to kind of blend and soften it up is to adjust the opacity just to kind of Any more questions about anything I'm having you to do, starting the project, executing the project? Um, what time does the computer lab close? It's 24 hours, Caleb. 